Hey everybody, Lee Fraser here, Maya Technical Specialist for Autodesk. And in this video, I wanted to share with you my approach being a non-programmer and wanting to take advantage of Bifrost and its visual programming capabilities. I decided to take a simple expression that I use inside of Maya and create a compound out of it that's reusable inside of Bifrost. So here's what I came up with. In my scene, I've got a saw here that I want to animate back and forth. And the perfect expression for this would be a sine wave. It would create a curve that I would multiply times time, and it would drive the back and forth motion of the saw. So luckily, that's easy to do inside of Bifrost because to create a sine wave, all I have to do is create a sine node by hitting the tab key in the Bifrost graph editor and typing in sine. When I hit enter, the node is created. And now all I just need to do to drive sine or the advancement of sine is to create a time node and plug the seconds into the value. So from here, if I open up the node editor, I can take the two nodes that I'm interested in, which is the Bifrost graph node and the saw transform node and hit the three key. And you can see there's nothing that's available to me being output from the saw graph until I take my sine wave or my sine channel and plug that into the output. So now that gets exposed and it's something I can quickly and easily take and drive my Translate Z with. And when I hit play, I get the back and forth motion that I expect. Sine waves are great for creating swinging doors or pendulums or flapping wings. It's a, a great curve to have access to. And so I might wanna reuse it, but to do that, I wanna have some control over it. I don't want this motion every single time. I want it, might want it faster in some cases or slower in others. So I'm just going to create a multiplier or a multiply node. And I'm gonna take time and disconnect it from the sine value and input it into this multiply node. And then I'm gonna right mouse button click on the plus sign here and create a new value node. And this is gonna be my multiply value. So if I type in something like five and then I take my output into the value and hit play, you can see now I get a much faster motion. So that's really cool. But I also want to be able to control the distance that it travels. And so I might want a multiplier after the sine wave uh, is multiplied by time. So that's easy to do. I'm just gonna select both of these nodes and copy and paste right into the box here. I'm using the shift and alt key to knife that connection that was to time. And now I'm gonna disconnect time from the output or sign actually from the output and then take the new output and drive sign again or drive this output, which we might wanna rename to something more, um, you know, maybe anim more meaningful, but now this sign or this value drives the distance that my saw travels. So when I hit play, not only do I get the fast motion, but I also get the distance uh, increased. So I can slow that down even if I decrease the value to something like 0.5. Now we could actually constrain maybe some characters' hands to the handle and let that drive their animation. But overall, this is the effect that I want. But now I want to make those controls of these two values available to me. So I'm just gonna drag those into the input. You can see I'm just dragging those to the plus sign. And then I'm gonna right mouse button click and rename the ports to what I want. In this case, this would be frequency. And then this second one would be, or maybe even speed, I could name them whatever I want. Uh, maybe make this amplitude. And so now when I select this saw graph or an artist selects this, they're gonna get the channels that are meaningful to them. And I'll just replicate the same values that I had before. And the last thing I need to do is select all of the nodes that I've created and hit Control G, and that collapses them into a compound, which I can then reuse in other scenes once I've published this. So this is the power of Bifrost. I can reuse this, I can customize it, I can use it in bigger tools, and it is really a good starting point to start creating those other tools. And I think it hopefully gives you some ideas and shows you the power of Bifrost outside of the simulation workflows and gives you a start down the path of sort of that visual programming type workflow. So let me know what you think. Uh, hopefully that helps and uh, I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.